Oh, dear. Hello and welcome to Allies Member Q&A podcast. No Michael this week, but we do have myself, Sasha Black, and we have Orna Ross. Hello, Orna. How are you this week? Hi, Sasha. I am very well. Hello, everyone. And it's nice to be here again for uh, one episode, at least. Yes, we've got our lovely faces back. I do just want to double check your recording uh, everything for us. Oh, yes, um, indeed. Thank you, excellent. Sasha. Little <laughs> reminder on the local recording, which I had indeed forgotten. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so we've got a jam packed episode as usual. Michael is away, um, but he will be back next time. Uh, however, we have got some excellent uh, questions. And the first one is relevant to the podcast. So the question is, how does one download the show notes to a podcast? Uh, to a podcast generally well I think it's actually specifically to ours so I can sort of add but it is it is in general uh, as well let's answer both ways yeah so our podcast is is housed on the self-publishing advice center which is selfpublishingadvice.org and so it is at selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash podcast and then every week that's updated with the latest episode and the it includes all the show notes that are mentioned in um, the episode. So all the links and everything that's referred to by the presenters will be there, as well as a transcript of the show, um, which is downloadable as well. So that's kind of how how we handle it. Uh, you also podcast. So do you do things do. a bit I differently? Used, well, not really. I used to do transcripts, but um, just because of time restraints, I don't anymore. Um, but I do have a blog with like the links and the things that are mentioned um, and they go into the podcast as well so even on a podcasting app you should be able to see the, the show notes if you just sort of scroll down and there'll be a button that w- on whichever your podcatcher is that says go to show notes I don't know whether you can download them from the podcast but you def- certainly can from my blog I think it's quite common that most podcasts have some kind of web static website where they will then update each week the um the show notes can't guarantee it of course (laughs) no no not every every podcaster is as wonderful as us but um yeah I think show notes are a very important part of of a podcast um because you know for obvious reasons if you want to follow up but also in terms of authors who are listening here who are maybe running their own podcasts or considering to 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 run a podcast I think it's really important that your listener has the option to go further so loads of them will just want what they got on that particular episode but lots of them may want to you know you may have a call to action like uh, buy my book um, or something like that so the show notes is the place for all of that and so thinking about the show notes at the beginning when you're setting up I think is really important yeah okay so our very next question is perfect for you because it's about poetry um so this question is from Abby um and it's sort of quite a long question so I'll just pull out a couple of bits from it and then I'll summarize it for you um so the question revolves around um Abby who has been writing and wanting to publish a poetry book for some time um they've been exploring various themes um and sort of collections in their writing um and um They've been using their Instagram hashtag chatbook, which has inspired them to publish a series of chat books with individual themes, but created to uh, connected to a larger theme of uh, chronic illness and trauma. And so the sort of summary of that then is what is the best way to maximize my use of a poetry chat book? OK, great. Well, first of all, great, great that you're doing this, Abby. And um, so many poets don't think about self-publishing. So fantastic. And you've really thought it through in terms of maximising the publication opportunities here. So, yeah, a chat book, picking one of them, picking the most um, accessible and the one that's likely to and you may know already has proven most popular with your readers and making that one free is a good idea. Having a perma-free chapbook that gives readers a sense of what your poetry is about. Um, you can use it to gather emails. That's probably the most effective way you can actually use it. So it's no cost, but you're just asking 
for people's emails if they want to access it and beginning to build your email list in that way. I'm asked by poets all the time, you know, I'm a poet, I'm publishing poetry, do I need an email list? And, you know, poet really is published just like anything else is published there really isn't that much difference in the actual publication process when we particularly when we get to there is in terms of typography and stuff depending on how the text looks on the page and stuff if you write that kind of page poetry where it's really important that it's laid out in a particular way yes then your production can be quite different to straight text but once you get into the marketing and promotion, it happens incredibly similarly. There is no great reason to depart. Um, you may back it up with more performances and more readings and stuff like that because poetry lends itself well to that kind of promotion. But essentially everything that that um, an author, publisher of fiction and nonfiction does should be done for, for your poetry as well. So I would say the most effective use then of your chapbook would be to yeah set it up as perma-free, use it to gather email addresses and perhaps do an audio version as well. And you can do the narration yourself unless you'd really rather not. Um, very often readers like to hear the poet read the poetry, even if they're, you know, they're not experienced narrators as something about hearing the actual poet. I mean, I wouldn't dream of narrating my fiction or nonfiction, but I do narrate my own poetry for that reason. So you might want to consider that. But an audio book is a is another way to kind of, you know, spread the word and then maybe do some kind of a video trailer um, of your chat book. It could be, um, you know, well, the sky's the limit in terms of what you want to do and how creative you want to get. It could be as simple as just you reading a poem and, and them, you know, seeing you. So poetry is very personal. It's the most personal of all the genre. And so capitalizing, in a sense, on that that personal touch um, and thinking about your chapbook almost like a calling card, uh, a sample. Here's here's me. Here's my heart on a plate. Have a little look. See what you think. And, um, you know, people will either some people will go for it and lots of people won't go for it. And that's the thing about poetry as well, because it really is very, very personal. Finding your readers and finding your niche can take a little bit longer. So the chapbook is a great way to to begin that. Lovely. I uh, I love that uh, about the audio. My <clears throat> wife is a big audiobook listener and has recently mentioned that she prefers to listen to authors narrate their own work. And I was like, oh, that's a tricky field because we don't all like to do that. <laughs> but those yeah. that do, like, I really do think it does give that personal, like, even more intimate feel to, like, the the, well, the fiction or non-fictional poetry so yeah love that without a doubt if you can do it you should do it you know um i mean you've got a great voice and you read very well so it's a bit of a no-brainer for you if if you're not skilled you know if you're not a good reader if you slur your words or you're indistinct or you know your accent yeah. makes it you know that it's difficult for you to be understood no it's yes, best to get somebody but if you can um, a number of us are there thereabouts with a bit of training we could yeah. we could be there a bit of practice you know so it's definitely worth considering it also saves you takes a lot of time but it saves you a lot of money if you can do it yourself I agree oh you've just given me a lovely idea for a goal for next year but anyway let's move on okay okay so the next question is from John and this one is around reviews so the question is around different countries um and they want to know which countries an author a reader sorry can leave anonymous reviews so for example just ratings um so on most read retailers readers can just leave reviews especially if it's via a digital 
um, book because usually at the end of the book, you're allowed to just hit a star rating. And that's not necessarily specific to any country, I don't believe. It's to reduce friction and encourage reviews. It's not that old, I don't think. But, um, but it is frustrating, obviously, if someone leaves a one star and doesn't leave any explanation. So we understand that. Um, there was a comment in the question specific to UK readers not being able to leave um, rating. But I can confirm because I do read uh, uh, digital books and I'm in the UK and I can leave just a rating um, and the other thing to know is that um, on Amazon specifically they're recently including Goodreads ratings as well I'm not quite sure why they've done this update but they are doing that as well so I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to add on it I mean the question is essentially is it possible for readers to leave anonymous reviews and if so like what country and what retailers yeah. So uh, no, I, I have nothing to add. Align completely with everything you've said beyond saying that authors are feeling bad about the Goodreads and Amazon hookup because they they use slightly different ratings systems and a three star on Goodreads is kind of known to be a better kind of rating than a three star on Amazon KDP. But there's nothing we can do about that. We must just deal with it and um, yeah. so yeah onwards okay so the next question comes from oh dear just where's the name gone uh the next question is from anna and this one says i've just brought an isbn number i plan to publish my book on kdp so what sort of format slash barcode is required so the overall question is do you need a barcode for your self-published book uh, the short answer is no. Yeah. So uh, don't barcode it up because you'll just cause endless difficulties for yourself with um, with the paperback and tarback producer people, which is essentially Amazon KDP Print and also Ingram Spark. If you want to uh, publish outside of the Amazon ecosystem, it's recommended that you would use Ingram Spark for that for your paperback uh, for your print books and um, paperback large print and hardback um, as well as Amazon. So it's not one or the other, but in both cases, in which case, um, in both cases, do not put a, a barcode. You don't need to. They will do that in the uh, printing process. It's one of the advantages of self-publishing. Yeah. Yeah. And just to explain in terms of liaising with your designer, typically the designer will leave a, a blank white rectangle and that rectangle is in the correct place for your uh, for the printers to print the barcode on for you automatically. Okay, the next question is about rights. And this one comes from Jennifer. And Jennifer says, I published through a vanity press and they're not delivering like they claimed. What are my best options to get my book more exposure? Um, so th the first thing that I would just mention is, and we've mentioned this before, but there's a great book by Caitlin Duncan, which is called Take Back Your Book. And that talks about how to get your your rights back essentially if you've been duped or if you are um, out of contract or if you are wanting to break your contract. So um, you, you essentially need to go back to your contract and see if there are any outs, what the clauses say around when you can ask for your rights back. Um, and then in if you can't get your rights back now and you still want to market the book, then I would say the best thing to do is a lot, a lot, a lot of research. So um, start with allies self publishing advice.org website because that's where we have our blog and there are not just hundreds but thousands of posts on our blog that uh, talk about all aspects of marketing publishing in fact all seven stages of um the, the process of creating your author business. So um, I would go on there, you can check the tags. And so you can look under specific tags on the website or category. So you could go to marketing, for example, we've got a ton of marketing uh, posts on there. We've also got um, a new book on pre-order, which is coming, I believe, in April 
is it April 23, um, which is all about how to market your book. We also have um, a ton of uh, very successful members in our Facebook forum. So you can go to our Facebook forum and you can ask questions in there. We also have fantastic ambassadors like Joanna Penn, who has a podcast, uh, The Creative Pen. I highly recommend you listen to all 660 or whatever it is episodes of her podcast. Uh, uh, so that's over a decade's worth of content on how to market a book. And um, yeah, there are a ton of, of books out there as well that you can read on on you know the best way to to market your book. I, Orna, I don't know if you want to add anything else. Yeah, I think returning on, on marketing, you know, it's about working out what kind of marketer you are, who your reader is, where your target uh, audience lies, what niche you're in, what genre you're in. All of that takes time. And then when you've got that kind of established in your mind and you, you know where you're going, then you can begin to do specific promotions. If you went to a self-publishing service and they kind of did everything for you, in a way, you haven't acquired a lot of the publishing skills you need. So you'll need to go back to the drawing board or sorry, you need to go to the drawing board, not back to it because you, you won't have started and uh, beginning to think about, about all of those things. Returning then also to getting your rights back, um, if it depending very much on the service that you have used, they may not have your rights. In fact, they had no right to your rights. So hopefully they didn't take your rights. So you paid a service for the job of putting your book together. A lot of vanity services present themselves as publishers. And some of them actually, as well as making you pay um, too much money, to do what they do, they also get you to sign over your rights. But that isn't actually um, OK. It's not OK for them to do it. Now, depending on who it is, depending on the service and who they are, you can actually um, sometimes be very successful in getting your rights back, even if they have, have taken them, or they may not have your rights at all, in which case you could let that edition of your book go out there because with most vanity services, it's just going to fall to the bottom of the heap and nobody's going to be aware of it. And you can take your book and you can actually go through the publishing process yourself with a new ISBN and put a new edition of the book out there as a properly independently published, you know, self-published title. So you might want to think about that. I'm not sure. So much depends on your situation. So if you wanted to investigate a little bit more, if you wanted just to take a look at the contract, just get in touch with Sarah I'm on member desk, info at allianceindependentauthors.org. Lovely. Okay, now we have a collection of questions. So uh, we've got questions from Delaney Michael, uh, but, uh, let's start with Delaney and Michael. Okie dokie. So the questions are around KDP accounts. So what should an author do when Amazon wrongfully terminates their KDP account? That's the first question. And then the second question is closely linked. With Amazon sometimes asking for proof of copyright, what advice do you give to UK authors on how to copyright our work? Because from what I can see uh, in the UK, we automatically own the copyright, which means we have no official copyright registration process. So these are both around... Um, yeah, rights and proving proving to yourself. We do have an article on Ally already, which I will put into the show notes, but it's selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash prove dash your dash publishing dash rights. Um, so yes, I don't know if you want to dive into this or if you want me to give a, a small summary or... I'll make a start and then you can add if I've um, left yeah. left stuff off. So I'll kind of go go back in the end of the question, back to the, the other uh, bigger question of when it's terminated. So Amazon famously uses um, an, an algorithm to kind of make this happen. So it's not a human person who's coming along and, and questioning your rights. So just first of all, on the, on the question of copyright and the UK and the US and all the rest of it, um, in every copyright jurisdiction in the world, copyright belongs to the author at the moment of creation. 
So you own your copyright everywhere. You don't need to register copyright to own it. What you do need now with self-publishing services and in the case of plagiarism, if, it, if something was to go to court, you need a way to, to demonstrate that you are the copyright holder. For an author, that's generally um, easy. And I know, um, Sasha, you've had this experience. It would be interesting to, to hear about yours. But just uh, from a general point of view, there are a number of ways to do it, and they're all listed in, in the article that, that um, Sasha's just given you the links for, and that is in the show notes. Um, but the important thing to realize is that Amazon is not interested in shutting down legitimate copyright owners and copyright holders. So don't worry if you get the letter. It's phrased in scary kind of sounding um, language, and it really can give you a fright and 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 sometimes often you're given five days to sort things out and all that kind of thing first thing to do is just immediately register with support desk that you are the copyright holder that you are an author um, because their bot doesn't know that and you know begin the process there S support desk will come back to you sometimes it, it's e it's as easy as that in the first email everything gets sorted Sometimes it's not, and um, we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But if you run into severe trouble and you're not getting anywhere with support desk or you're sent around the houses, which can happen with Amazon sometimes, that you're sent from one person to another to another and nobody's solving the issue for you. If you're a member, just get in touch with us and let us know and we can um, take it to somebody in Amazon who will look at your case and um, hopefully get things sorted for you. We, we can't guarantee that because we don't know why your book would have been flagged. Um, and some cases you may have done something inadvertently. We've had authors who have done things that have um, been a problem with other people's copyright, perhaps an illustration or, you know, you've, you've been over liberal in your fair use of somebody else's work or, um, inadvertently plagiarized or whatever. So we can't guarantee a solution. And it is a very serious matter. And particularly if you're only publishing on Amazon, which again, as you will know, if you listen to us regularly, we don't recommend. We recommend you not to put all your publishing eggs in one basket, but we do know that a lot of authors do. So it's a very serious matter to get, you know, to get this right, if you like, and to, to understand the implications of copyright. Tell them about your story. So I uh, had uploaded my book via, because uh, this was a wide book. So I'd uploaded via Amazon and then I'd also uploaded to Ingram Spark. And I had not double checked a minor, minor detail. So in the book's metadata section, there is a section for who the publisher is. And for whatever reason, Ingram Spark was defaulting to Sasha Black, as in my name, but I have an imprint name of Atlas Black Publishing. And so I noticed this when it came up on Amazon, uh, the Ingram Spark paperback appeared on Amazon. I was like, oh, the publisher's saying Sasha Black, that's weird. Well, let me go in and edit that. And of course, I clicked then Atlas Black Publishing, and then Amazon, for whatever reason, assumed that uh, that, that I had sold the rights to Atlas Black Publishing and therefore Atlas Black Publishing needed to prove that it owned the rights. And it was this whole debacle. I definitely only got five days to, to sort it, which was extremely stressful. Um, but the way that I proved it was by showing my... So I did all kinds of things from sending email trails uh, from designers, like historical records to say um, that, you know, I was one in the same, but it wasn't wasn't accepting any of that. So the only way that it accepted it was that I showed my ISBN account with Nielsen and it had both Sasha Black and the publisher name on the same page. And that was the only way that I proved that I owned the copyright. So 
all praise the ISBN <laughs> and, and owning your own ISBNs. That's all I can say. I've never heard the sentence all praise to the ISBN I before. And I don't <laughs> expect I ever will again. <laughs> One and only time, that's it. Um, so, so, okay, great. So that kind of covers the copyright one. And then what do you do when Amazon wrongfully terminates your account? That's a slightly different question, but kind of all rolled into one. Yeah, well, that, that was what I was saying. If you're finding that you're not having any luck and often if you're terminated, um, that's the end of support desk. You can't get access to your account and therefore you can't ask for help anymore and you can't contact them and, and all of that. So if you are an ally member and you are a legitimate author and you haven't been messing about and doing things you shouldn't have been doing, then yes, if you contact us at the um, support desk, the address again is info at allianceindependentauthors.org then we will put your case to Amazon for you. We'll need your case um, history and any information and documentation you have about it. And again, if your account has been terminated, you may not have those details, but we will need something to, to, to go on. So it points to keeping, you know, to authors keeping good records of their books and their correspondence with um, downloading correspondence with support desks generally makes sense just in the rare and unlikely event of something like this happening at least you've got the documentation that that can can show what you need so do take a look at that blog post and um you know look at the proofs that are needed and that are accepted i should say and uh, make sure that you have them. I think I might go and screenshot my account. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next question is, um, oh no, we just had the one. Okay, so the next question is from Jane. Jane says, is it worth paying a coach to help me with creating Amazon ads? And is there a risk that the ads will become very expensive if there are many clicks? So, um, not a bad idea to pay for a coach if you've got the money, but you could also take a self-paced course. So you could, there are many, many courses out there and do obviously make sure you read all of the reviews, get testimonials or like even better, ask for um, uh, suggestions of courses from other authors who've already taken them and have known that they have been useful. Um, because what I would say is that um, if you can do it, by yourself via a self-paced course, you will save yourself a lot of money in the long run and that will make them more affordable for you. Um, another thing to say is that Amazon ads actually take typically, and obviously you can't uh, you know, quote me on this, but typically they won't swallow money as fast as other platforms like Facebook and BookBub, for example, which if you set a budget, it will absolutely spend that budget. Um, whereas that's not necessarily the case uh, with, with Amazon. Of, you know, and it's also all set by clicks. So yes, you've asked about clicks here. Um, if you set your cost per click at say 30p and you get a hundred clicks, obviously you can times that by a hundred and, and you'll get what your costs will be. So um, yes, it could cost a lot of money, but if out of those uh, say hundred clicks, you're getting 20, 30, 40 book sales, then actually you're going to be more than making your money back. And so this is why it's really good to understand the systems, take a course to explain this um, information and how it works and how to get a return on your investment. The other thing, last thing that I will say is with any type of advertising, there is a learning period and an investment period. So you are going to need a little bit of money put aside just to experiment um, and to learn what works and what doesn't work. So um, if, if that's not something that's feasible for you, then this type of advertising might not be the right solution for you. Um, but if you do, even if you can start with, you know, just a small amount of money to experiment with, you might find, um, yeah, that eventually you can increase your budgets. Yeah. And conversely, if you do have money, because if you're considering a coach, you may be somebody for whom, you know, financial budget is not the most uh, serious thing. I would say also something that you might consider is getting an expert to run your ads for you. So, again, 
you're going to have to sell an awful lot more books, obviously, to cover their costs and the costs of the ads. But when you've got somebody who really knows what they're doing, that can make a difference. So it very much depends on whether you are you know, time rich or money rich, or if you're like most authors, neither, um, as to how you may approach this. If you are getting your original question about, you know, lots of clicks and costs and stuff, if you're getting lots of clicks and you're not getting sales to match, then there's something wrong with your Amazon page. And so it's not converting. And that will be because either the book description's not right, the cover is not right, something there is not appealing to the potential reader who was interested enough to click on the ad and go through to your sales page, but didn't convert over. So if that's happening um, with lots and lots of clicks, then that's good information. That tells you. And one of the great things about doing ads, be it Facebook ads, BookBub ads, Amazon ads, whatever, is that they can highlight that in in you know what's not working so if you're not getting clicks the ad's not working if you are getting clicks and you're not getting conversions then the sales page is not working so that's good information it's good to know yeah okay so three more questions two quick ones and one slightly longer one so the first question is from david which says i've self-published a new non-fiction evidence-based positive psychology self-help book through busy bird publishing they're great and i'm wondering if there is a list of non-fiction book awards here in australia and internationally that is available to members so we have a contest di- di- hard for me to say directory uh in our on our ratings and service kind of page uh so the specific link we can put into the show notes it's actually selfpublishingadvice.org forward slash awards is it self-publishing advice or is it on the ally member service it's it's on the self-publishing advice site okay yeah Yeah. perfect okie dokie Um, So that was the first question. And then the second question is sort of similar. So uh, this one is from uh, WM, JWM. Okay, and they say, at one time, you had a concise table that ranked various available services, such as publishing and editing, etc, thereby facilitating a search for the best appropriate services. Um, I'm a little bit confused and wondered if you could point me to where I can find this information. So that's self publishing Um, and advice.org forward slash best ratings just okay. ratings just oh, ratings. okay yeah yeah um it, there's a couple of friendly links now okay. to yeah. all them. they have their long their long unwieldy links but yeah so for the awards self-publishing advice.org forward slash awards and for the ratings self-publishing advice.org forward slash ratings okay and both of those will be in the show notes as well So the last question then is from Lee and Lee is asking about Ingram Spark. I've been waiting for Ingram Spark to finally approve a recent update to my title and it's gone into weeks. The publication date I set is fast approaching. Should I advance the publication date so it won't be there as so it won't be there before the Ingram Spark approval or just leave it as it is. So I think a general question is what do I do if I encounter problems with Ingram's service, Ingram Spark service? Yeah. So first of all, with anything like that, don't just wait. Um, With all of the services, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, You need to be proactive in terms of of stuff like that. So it sounds like and perhaps that's just a mistake in, in how we're reading your question, but it sounds like you may have just kind of put the update up and then just waited and watched your launch approach with ever increasing panic. So it's always good to just you know ping them and let them know you're waiting let them know about your launch get into a conversation with with support tests sometimes with the best will in the world things take long time and it depends on where you are in the world how long things are taking at the moment there are lots of things affecting print um not least a paper shortage so print print lead times are longer than they have been before and you know especially at this time of the year when it gets very busy 
then um, you need you need to be careful. But the support desks are your first port of call, the support desk for the service. And then again, uh, harking back to the questions that we had earlier, if you find that you're you know not getting anywhere, then do drop us a line, um, info at allianceindependentauthors.org, and we can see if we can make things happen for you. However, it's unlikely that we would be able to act within a time frame that would, you know, speedily sort something like that out. It takes us time to get through to the right person, takes them time to come back to us and us to get back to you. So I suppose the overall um, advice, in addition to do use the, their support desk services, that's what they're there for. The overall advice would be if you're publishing, when it comes to publishing your print, make sure that you leave long lead times, kind of leave the lead time that seems reasonable and then add some weeks onto it. Sometimes authors don't realize that print is more complex and takes longer to set up and um, get out there and get approved and everything in comparison to, to the ebook. It's not the same. So do make allowances for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I used to leave a month and now it's like you need to leave even longer than that, really. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's not a long time when you think that, you know, bigger publishers publish months, years in advance sometimes. Um, you know, publishing takes time and particularly you can view it as time in which you can be setting up your marketing. There's lots you can be doing as a publisher in advance of the book coming out. So a delay in the actual publication date is not necessarily a bad thing. And be very wary of setting a publication date without your books done and dusted and available, yeah. really, because what's the hurry? Um, the book's going to be out for the rest of your life and you're just creating a, a, a big stress for yourself. So it makes a lot more sense to set your marketing up around a date that's a bit a bit further on. I, you know, I say this as someone who has lived and learned. OK, I did just notice um, our question, our, our most popular question, uh, a couple down, which was from Jeffrey, who says, uh, where can I find the Ingram Spark code to <laughs> not pay the forty nine dollar fee? So you'll need to navigate to our member site, which is Alliance of Independent, sorry, Alliance Independent Authors dot org. And then once you're logged in, you can navigate to discounts and deals and then you can search uh, in there and it's always in there and just to note that the code does change regularly so every time you need it you need to go in there and look for it yes that's right it's monthly so if you used it last month you can't use it um, it will be a different code this month and also you can only use it five times within a month yeah yeah Okay, perfect. So that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you okay. for stepping in. <laughs> it was fun to be back. <laughs> and thank you for the great questions. And thank you everyone for sending your questions in and keep them coming. It really helps other people to hear. Only members can submit a question, but obviously everyone can listen. And so it helps everybody when you ask your question in this public forum. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. And Michael and I will be back in January. So we will see you in January. Have a lovely a festive period or lovely summer, depending on what hemisphere you're in. And uh, yeah, we will see you in 2023. Happy holidays. Bye bye. <laughs>